Hi, everyone. Welcome to our uh, webinar series here at Advanced eClinical Training. I am going to wait no longer than three minutes just to make sure we give all of our attendees an opportunity to join. Again, if you are joining, thank you so much. As I said right in the beginning, I'm going to wait no longer than three minutes. I just want to make sure that we give all of our, our all of our um, uh, attendees an opportunity to join us. I just want to make sure I'm turning the chat features on. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me well and that you are able to um, respond in the chat to me. So if you can respond in the chat, please let me know. Awesome, thanks so much. Chat is disabled. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm working on enabling the chat here. So just bear with me here. Yes, I'm working on getting the chat <laughs> turned on. Just bear with me.
All right, so we're just going to go ahead and get started and we I will um, figure out the chat as we go. Um, but again, I want to welcome you all to the uh, our webinar series here at advanced eClinical training. I want to thank you for spending your evening here with us. Um, we're so excited that you are here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so if you don't already know me, my name is Leah Medwig and I am the lead course instructor here at Advanced E-Clinical Training. I have been a nurse for over uh, 12 years and I started my career in cardiothoracic surgery and then I went on to um, work in a level one uh, trauma and burn emergency department in a very large metropolitan city. Um, I then went on to become a uh, complex and catastrophic nurse case manager for a large national health insurance company. I completed my master's degree and since teaching was already always in my heart, I love teaching uh, new students and precepting new hires. Education was kind of a, a very natural, um, a very natural progression for me. So that is how I ended up here at advanced e clinical training. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's see here. So uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, advanced e-clinical training, we are a fully online self-paced allied healthcare certification program. So we offer uh, programs, certification programs for um, certified medical assisting, certified patient care tech, uh, certified pharmacy tech, and um, you can go ahead and check out our uh, website it is advancedclinicallearning.org. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, and again, we are asynchronous. You can complete these programs in as little as eight weeks. And we're geared to you know pre-health students, but also towards students who want to go on to medical school, who want to go on to nursing school, who also want to uh, go on to PA school, pharmacy school, and that really need those direct um, that is that direct patient care experience. So um, that's what we're here for. Um, and for any student, for any of our attendees who aren't current students, we are offering you a, a discount code today for uh, $200 off any of our uh, enrollment into any one of our certification programs. And again, that um, that discount code is webinar 200. Um, all right. And one last thing, we will also, of course, be issuing all of our attendees a one hour of clinical shadowing certificates. Um, and we will be sending that to your email, the email that you use to um, uh, uh, sign up for this uh, webinar. So as far as the webinar goes, I want to try to make this an interactive experience. I realize that the chat somehow is not working and I thought I had that worked out, but um, we have a couple of polls that I, um, I'm going to have you guys participate in and answer. Um, and then we can also, of course, just uh, communicate within the um, question and answer um, uh, form here. So I think that uh, will be fine. Again, we can communicate in this question and answer feature if, uh, if need be, but um, you know, this is, but there's no pressure here. This is a learning experience for everybody. Um, so we're going to keep it as light and as professional and fun as we possibly can. So um, <clears throat> this case um, is case 956. And uh, you're going to see a video of a real patient who presented to the emergency department. He was videotaped um, with his permission, of course, for educational purposes. Um, so we all can learn together. So that being said, I am gonna go ahead and share my screen and we will get started. I'm gonna start with the video of the patient. And if for some reason you all can't hear me uh, or hear the video, please let me know in the question and answer feature. All right, so are you all seeing my video? Awesome, okay, perfect. Love it, okay. So if you can't hear it, I'm gonna- All right, good evening, how you doing? Let's start it over. All right, all right good evening, how you doing tonight? I'm good, and you? Doing okay? 
thanks for taking the time to do this video. I'm Dr. Moore here at Yale. So tell me, what was the reason you came in here tonight? I was sick of cell pain. Man, I did not. Yeah, so it was, where was the, where was the pain hurting? Where was it? Oh, through my body, my chest, my through legs. The, so the chest was hurting and your legs? My arms. Was this typical of your usual sickle cell pain? Yes. Was it any worse or different? No, about the same. Okay, but you did have some chest pain? Yes. Have you been coughing at all? All right, so we, so he comes into the emergency department, this patient does, he has kind of diffuse body pain, he has shortness of breath, he has some chest pain and some cough, and then we, and then he um, lets us know that he has a history of sickle cell disease. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so sickle cell disease. Um, <clears throat> So sickle cell disease is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders. So what you can see here is on the right side, you see this healthy red blood cell and it's nice and round. It's kind of concave in the middle. And with patients that have sickle cell disease, this is what their red blood cells look like. So um, red blood cells contain hemoglobin and that's a protein that carries oxygen to the rest of our body. So Healthy red blood cells, again, are round and they move through the small blood vessels to carry oxygen to all parts of the body. But somebody that has sickle cell disease, the hemoglobin is abnormal, as we can see. And it causes the red blood cells to become hard and sticky and look like this C-shaped, um, they call it a farm tool called a sickle. So that's how it gets the sickle cell disease. So when the patient that has sickle cell disease, when there are red blood cells that are sickled like this, travel through the small vet blood vessels, they get stuck and they can clog blood flow. Um, and this can cause severe pain. Um, and it can cause other serious complications such as infection, acute chest syndrome and stroke. Um, so also what's important about this is that the sickle cells, they die early. So this causes a constant shortage of red blood cells. So I'm going to, so as you can see here on the left, this is a normal patient or a healthy patient that has healthy red blood cells. And this is their blood vessel. And you can see how the blood, 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 <laughs> red blood cells just move very smoothly and nicely through their blood vessels. Here on the right, you can see a patient that has sickle cell. This is their blood vessel. And you can see these blood, red blood cells that are sickle shaped and they get sticky and they, they clog together. They don't move easily through the, um, through the blood vessel. And then they also die early. So there's always a constant shortage of red blood cells for these patients. All right, so let's go back to the video. All right, so we're gonna continue with the video. Please, again, let me know if you can't hear it or see it by utilizing the question and answer feature. Paul? A little, but not so much. Yeah, how about your breathing? Are you short of breath or anything like that? Yes. You are short of breath? Yes. How long has that been going on? For like two to three days. Okay, and any fevers at all? Yes. You have had fever? Yes. At home, did you measure it? Do you know how high it was? 102. 102? Not 100.2, but 102? 100. No, 102. 102, okay. Um, all right, well, we got you here on a little oxygen. Is that helping at all? Yes. Okay. All right, we're gonna do some tests um, and probably give you some medicines, but thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to talk to us. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take this out of full screen mode because there are some items I'd like you all to see here. So um, let's take a look at his vital signs. He comes into the ER, vital signs. He has a, a temperature of 101.1, .1, so we know that he has a fever. His heart rate is 111. We know that a 
normal resting heart rate for a healthy adult is between 60 and 100. So he's a little tachycardic. Um, his respiratory rate, I don't really believe that it's 18. If somebody has a, a pulse oximetry of 81% on room air, they're probably likely breathing, uh, taking more respirations a minute than 18, but we'll have to take it as 18. The important thing is 81% on room air, we know that he's hypoxic and um, that's not normal. A normal pulse oximetry for a healthy adult is 92% to 100%, so they have him in oxygen. Of course, blood pressure 127 over 76. So that's normal. And as you can see here in this graph, um, some of his vital signs, so they did see here in the ER, his, his pulse ox was low, so they put him on a, a nasal cannula for some oxygen, and that certainly, um, certainly was the right thing to do. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, because this brings us to my first poll for everybody. All right. So what do you think okay so what do you think is happening with this patient go ahead and choose your answer for me and i will wait here to see what everybody thinks is going on All right, we have a, still getting some answers here. <clears throat> it looks like acute chest syndrome is, is winning the race at this point. <clears throat> a few more, a few more waiting for a few more people to answer. Just gonna wait just a few more seconds so we can continue to move on. All right, so I think we have everybody answered that's going to answer at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll, but it looks like acute chest syndrome has kind of won the race here, but, um, <clears throat> and here are the results that you all can see. So that was kind of a trick question because um, this patient, he could have all of those answers. Those are all very valid and viable reasons why he is in the emergency room and he is as sick as he is. He could have had an asthma attack. He could have COVID-19, he could have pneumonia. He could have COVID-19 pneumonia. So it's a little bit of a trick question, but again, all of those answers are valid and viable. So um let me see here so based on that so we know what his vital signs are we know what his symptoms are um what kind of workup are we going to do for this person so go ahead and put it in the question and answer feature uh, for me i apologize that our chat feature is not working but if you utilize the question and answer feature you can go ahead and um let me just put in there So what kind of workup are we going to do? So go ahead and, and put your answers in the question and answer feature. I apologize that our chat is not working. So let me see what we have going. Well. X-ray, of course, we're definitely going to do chest X-ray, um, for sure, chest X-ray. Um, yes, tested for COVID-19. Yes, chest X-ray. Definitely EKG as well, right? He's tachycardic, so we want to see what his heart rhythm is, definitely for sure. Um, yes, basic metabolic panel, blood work, 
definitely CDC. Yes, complete blood counts. Yes, yeah, so you guys are all on the right track for sure. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go ahead and close down this uh, question and answer. It looks like we're all on the right page and we're all moving in the right direction. So that's awesome. I'm glad, I like the way you all are thinking. Yes, pain medications. Yes, yes. So, all right. So let's take a look here. I'm going to share my screen again. And we are going to go down to Oh, I apologize that we actual outcome. Okay, here we are. So we can see they did blood work. So we were again thinking you guys were all moving in the right direction. Your thinking was uh, very valid and clear. Um, we see with this blood work, his white blood cell count is 23.5. So that's elevated. An elevated white blood cell count is in is an indication for some type of infection. We see that his red blood cell count, his hemoglobin, and his hematocrit are all very low. And I guess we would expect this in a patient with sickle cell. Of course, we know that they don't, you know, their red, red blood cells um, die more quickly. They don't carry the hemoglobin protein the way they need to. Um, so we would expect all of this. But again, you know, it's 7.3 a hemoglobin. A normal for a man is... 13.2 um, to 16.6. So definitely, um, he's definitely very low. Also, I want to show you guys the chest x-ray. This is his actual chest x-ray here. Um, so this is the darker spaces or the lungs. And so if you can see very, uh, very small, there's these little small white patches, and those are called patchy infiltrates. So he has some patchy infiltrates as in his lungs, and that's usually indicative of a pneumonia, a beginning pneumonia, which is an infection in the lungs. So you guys were all thinking in the right direction. So yes, pneumonia definitely has pneumonia. You know, he has some definite anemia. Um, his hemoglobin is low. All right. So <clears throat> let's take a look at what the different differential diagnosis is for this patient. So of course, sickle cell crisis, sickle cell pain, we know that, and then acute chest syndrome. So this is kind of a new one, acute chest syndrome. It's not very common, um, but they did again in the emergency room, the lab evaluation, blood work, and the chest x-ray, which we've already talked about. Uh, so this brings me to our second poll that, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right, let's see, and so what do you think causes acute chest syndrome? What is causing his acute chest syndrome in this patient? Go ahead and um, answer here in this poll. Asthma attack, yeah, pneumonia, plural, plural fusion, pulmonary embolism, asthma. You guys are all thinking appropriately. So we have um, Almost everybody has answered. 80% participants have answered. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes, guys. Go ahead and answer the second poll question for me. What causes acute chest syndrome? All right, so it looks like everybody who's going to answer has. So I'm going to end our poll here and I'm going to share the results with you. Also, pneumonia went out, uh, pulmonary embolism was very close, pleural fusion, asthma attack. So let me um, 
And again, that was a little bit of a, a trick question because several of those things could cause acute chest syndrome, but acute chest syndrome is not a, um, a, a normal thing. It's not something that we see in the emergency room all the time. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint because I want to share some information with you. All right. So here, what is acute chest syndrome? in sickle cell disease. So acute chest syndrome is a complication of sickle cell disease. And it involves chest pain, cough, fever, low oxygen levels, and abnormal substances accumulating in the lungs. So these lung infiltrates, and we did see that on the chest X-ray that this patient did have those patchy white infiltrates in his lungs, indicative of a beginning of a pneumonia. Um, and he definitely has the chest pain, he has the cough, he has the fever, and he has the low oxygen levels. So what's, what's um, problematic about this is that this condition can progress quickly, and it is also one of the most common causes of hospitalization and death in people with sickle cell disease. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I want to go back to um, our video to share some information there with you. All right, so let's take a look at the diagnosis. So yes, so we so we were right. So we were all thinking in the right direction. This is like a journey. We're all taking the journey together and we're getting there. So he was actually diagnosed with acute chest syndrome and a sickle cell crisis. Um, I don't think that that is uh, too far off from probably what we were all um, what we were what we were all thinking here. So um, based on that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, because I am going to put a question here for you all on the question and answer feature. So <clears throat> how are, so how are we gonna treat this patient? How, um, knowing his vital signs, knowing his lab work, knowing his chest X-ray and what his diagnosis is. So what, how are we gonna treat him? How are we going to get him better? So go ahead and pop your answers in that question and answer feature. Yeah, so IV fluids, antibiotics, of course, antibiotics, we definitely need that. Uh, for the pneumonia, that's for sure. IV fluids, definitely. Um, you know, he's probably dehydrated. That could be why he's tachycardic. Again, um, you know, if, if you have a patient that is tachycardic, they could be, they could be dehydrated. So IV fluids, definitely. Antibiotics, definitely. Um, yeah, so iron medication. So I wouldn't say so much iron medication. He's going to need something much more strong than that. He's going to need a blood transfusion or probably a couple of blood transfusions to get that hemoglobin and his red blood cells up, but definitely supplemental oxygen for sure. So we are all, I like the way you think you're all, all moving in the right direction. So, um, albuterol, you know, anything to help support his respiratory system. Definitely. Um, all right. I like the, like the way you guys speak blood transfusion. Awesome. I guess I should move that out of the way of my face. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you because I wanted you, I want to, I want you all to see this um, image that I have but you all are thinking awesome. Like you're all on the right track. Okay, so let's see here. So what is causing the chest and the, so we wanna know what causes acute chest syndrome. So um, bone marrow necrosis, fat embolism, infection. Um, so these are the things that, 
people that have sickle cell disease, this is some of the things that can cause their acute chest syndrome. In our patient here, it looks most likely that this infection is. So it seems like he probably had some type of viral um, respiratory infection that then developed into a pneumonia that then caused um, you know, his acute chest syndrome. Um, it could have been a bacterial pneumonia as well. It, we don't really know for sure. Most nine times out of 10, it's viral. Um, we don't know for sure, but it's still a pneumonia. He's still gonna be treated with IV antibiotics. So that's what happened to our patient. But here is a very interesting um, image. So this is the death spiral of acute chest syndrome and sickle cell disease. So you can see why this um, condition is so dangerous um, for our patients that have sickle cell disease. Um, so, you, you know, it could start, our patient could start here, it could start here, he could start here, here. It looks like our patient probably started right here. So he had a viral pneumonia or bacterial pneumonia um, that started to cause some hypoxia. So hypoxia is low oxygen saturation in the blood. So you can see hypoxia further promotes red, the red blood cells to sickle. So because he had the low oxygen levels, it's making his already condition worse by sickling those red blood cells. So he starts here, then he goes up here. And so the sickling occurs in the lungs. It's a, it's because that's what he has. He has sickle cell disease. So that's already going to happen. And it's, a, it's impairing his pulmonary micro, microvasculature. So then he moves over here. So now he has hypoxia. He has this further sickling of the red blood cells in his pulmonary microvasculature. So his, his worsening pulmonary function. So his lung function is worsening. Then he drops down here. So that because he has worsening pulmonary function, his desaturization of his systemic blood is getting worse. Makes sense, right? Because that's happening and he goes back over here. So it makes him more hypoxic. So he's in, he's like almost stuck in this spiral of acute chest syndrome and sickle cell disease. So it's a very serious um, and dangerous condition that needs to be treated uh, very quickly. And um, aggressively. So I'm going to stop sharing. I want to go back to um, our video and show you the actual outcomes for this patient. So yes, he was treated with oxygen, fluids, early antibiotics, blood transfusions, nebulizers, albuterol, definitely admission to the hospital for sure. Um, and then let's take a look at some of the standards of care because I want to show you all that you were thinking appropriately um, there in your medical minds. I love it that uh, your suggested workup of labs and imaging was awesome and correct. And of course, we already talked about the suggested treatment of what he needed. Um, moving on to some of these key points. So what's we need to know is that this patient had a prior history of sickle cell disease. He also had a um, comorbid condition called asthma on top of that. So this patient was already so um, predisposed, predisposed to um, the acute chest syndrome being that he had sickle cell disease, also has a history of asthma. So he's already not breathing well. Um, he presented with the pain that he stated was typical typical for sickle cell disease. Most, most patients that have sickle cell have chronic pain. Um, that's very common for them. But the issue was is that he had the fever, that he had the low oxygen saturations, that he had these ronkerous breath sounds in his lungs, um, and he had those patchy infiltrates on his chest x-ray. So they immediately treated him with the oxygen, with the fluids, with broad spectrum antibiotics for pneumonia, um, broad spectrum, because at that point in the ER, they probably weren't very sure, you know, what bacteria was causing the pneumonia. So 
um, you know, that usually can take a couple of days to come back to see what, um, you know, they would probably test test a sputum culture to see what antibiotics are sensitive to whatever strain of bacteria that is. So that's why in the beginning, they, they treat with a broad, uh, broad spectrum antibiotic. Um, and of course, transfuse blood for sure um, for that low hemoglobin. And again, as I said, that acute chest syndrome is an emergency. It has a very high mortality rate um, if it's not treated aggressively and very quickly. And then you can see some of these editor's notes here. Um, he did, this patient did look, you know, ill, of course. Um, he did seem very short of breath. Um, and so I wanted to see, <clears throat> and of course, as we said, they need to be, you know, admitted to the hospital for pain control, oxygen, IV fluids, and, and um, until he is, well enough to go home. All right. So that ends our, I'm gonna stop sharing here. All right, so that ends, um, let's see questions. There are lots of questions. All right, so this ends <laughs> our, uh, my presentation. So now I want to uh, start with the questions and answers. And um, I apologize if you are, uh, again, that the chat feature is not working. So I'm just going to type here and use uh, utilize the question and answer feature um, for any questions that you have about this. Okay. And again, I just want to thank you all for joining us. I really love these webinars that we're all doing here. Um, I think they're fun and they're very uh, informative for sure. So any questions about um, this case? So I see one here coming from Valerie. So if given a blood transfusion, do those transfused blood cells become sickled as well? Yes, they do once they are in the body. So, um, you know, something with that trait that, that it is with sickle cell that even though he's getting transfused uh, healthy red blood cells, once they're in his system, that trait is going to sickle some of those red blood cells as well, unfortunately. All right, so let me see. Any other questions? Okay. Pull this over here. Could you show the x-ray for a quick second, please? Yes, definitely. Um, let me just answer this one other question. How do you ensure you do not misdiagnose as the patient had comorbidities? That's a really good question. And I think that's something that's always on um, you know, a provider's mind. There's practitioner, physician's assistant, um, a doctor, and they're the ones that are um, making the diagnosis. So you have to just rely on what um, the patient's history is, what their underlying health conditions are, and what, um, what your clinical experience is. So um, yes, he had asthma, but based on the fact that he has a history of sickle cell disease, based on the fact that um, he had pneumonia that was um, confirmed by the chest x-ray, um, then you know we know that he has some type of infection and that he's probably in this acute chest syndrome spiral. So let me just bring up this chest x-ray uh, quickly. And so no, there is unfortunately no cure for sickle cell disease, unfortunately. Um, and so yes, a blood transfusion, is the transfusion just to increase the oxygen? No. So the, the, the transfusion is also to increase the red blood cells that will also help with um, oxygen is like oxygen, getting oxygen to the different tissues in the body. But the blood transfusion is really just to help more with um, his red blood cell count to help uh, with his energy levels that will help increase his energy level. Um, and it will help him get better, better overall. So it's not just to increase oxygen levels. So let me just uh, bear with me here a moment. I just want to pull up this chest X-ray. 
because somebody wants to see it. It's an anonymous attendee. Hang on here just a moment. Try to move this out of the way. Um, let me go back up here. All right, so here is the chest x-ray. Um, let's see, any other questions? Can you explain what is shown in the x-ray again? Okay, so here we have the lungs left side and the right side. And I'm sorry, this is the left and this is the right. I apologize for that. So um, what you can see here is the darker material, like the darker spaces is a healthy lung tissue. It's darker, but as you can see, starting um, in the in the darker black space, there's these small white patchy infiltrates, and that is indicative of a beginning of a pneumonia. If that makes sense to you. So, how different would the workup be if he was unaware that he had sickle cell disease? I mean. The workup probably wouldn't be much different. We're all, we know we're always going to do a chest x-ray. Someone comes into the ER and they're like, I'm, I'm having chest pain. I have shortness of breath and they have a low oxygen level. Definitely going to do a chest x-ray. Definitely going to do blood work. Um, so the workup wouldn't have been any different than if he had not had sickle cell disease. Is stem cell transplant also a possible cure. So there is no cure for sickle cell disease. So there, again, this, there's no cure for sickle cell disease. A lot of these patients, you know, like I said, are have chronic uh, pain. They're on chronic pain medications. Um, they have to get free, frequent blood uh, transfusions. Um, really just kind of support, the, the treatment is really trying to just support their um, overall health. And so they most this, as you can see them, I didn't show you guys this, but he, this patient um, was on uh, hydroxyurea, which is a medication um, that patients that have sickle cell disease uh, sometimes take. So, um, so there's medications involved with that as well. So how long does a person with sickle cell disease live? That's a good question. I, you know, they definitely have a lower um, um, expectancy of life, unfortunately, just because of all the complications that are involved with sickle cell disease. You know, you have this acute chest syndrome, you have, you know, multiple, um, uh, you know, you're more susceptible to, viral and bacterial infections, you, um, I've had some patients of mine that had sickle cell disease that ended up, you know, losing a leg or losing an arm or, you know, having some amputations because of, of blood clotting. And so, you know, then they're, you know, they're in a wheelchair. And so there's, it kind of just takes a tumble. Their, their health just continues to tumble. So I, I don't know what the exact life expectancy is for a patient with sickle cell disease, but it's definitely lower than um, somebody who doesn't have it. Does the pneumonia make him more likely to be hospitalized in the future? Yes, absolutely. His sickle cell disease makes him more likely to be hospitalized in the future for sure. Um, and so how does a person manage living with sickle cell disease? So, you know, it's just, again, trying to um, live as healthy and as clean as you possibly can. So no smoking, good nutritional support. Um, let me just take this off of here. I'm gonna stop sharing here so we can see each other. Um, good nutritional support, you know, uh, vaccines to keep you, you know, well, um, good hand hygiene. So you're really just trying to um, maintain your health and try to not get ill, basically. Well, you're welcome. I, um, any other questions? Um, 
So at what age is sickle cell usually diagnosed? So sickle cell is usually, usually diagnosed um, in children. So, you know, uh, and, and so since it's an inherited disease, so um, if one parent is known to have it or both parents are known to have it, usually children, um, their children are then tested. Um, so they are able to kind of get a jump and a handle on things before uh, they start having symptoms. Yes, and sickle cell disease is hereditary for sure. Uh, questions, let's see. Yes, so sickle cell disease is definitely something you are born with. It's hereditary. It is either, you know, um, you can get the gene from one parent or two parents. Um, <clears throat> and so it's hereditary for sure. All right, so that looks like that's the end to our questions and answers. Um, again, I just want to thank you all for spending your evening here with us. I want to let you know if you, um, <clears throat> you know, are not already a uh, current student here with Advanced Youth Clinical Training, we would love to have you. Uh, we are offering you a discount code uh, for $200 off any one of the um, uh, our certification programs. Um, and that discount code is webinar2000. Let me just put it here. I'm sorry, webinar200. Webinar200, there it is. I'm going to just put it in there. There's your discount code. Um, and again, it's $200 off any one of enrollment into any one of our certification programs. Um, let me see here. So the next webinar, we're doing monthly webinars now, um, and I'm really excited about that. I, I, we don't have the exact date set for our next webinar, but it will be in November, and it will probably be one of our MD mentors or a PA mentor that we also have at Advanced e Clinical Training as well presenting. So we like to give everybody um, a little bit of variety so you can learn from all of us here, and that's the best way to learn um, in my view. So again, webinar 200, uh, go over to Advanced e Clinical uh, Training and um, take a look at us. And uh, thank you so much for, for joining. Um, we're also, like I said, gonna send out those um, one, you get one hour of, um, of uh, clinical shadowing experience certificate. So that will be sent to the email that you use to uh, sign up for this webinar within 24 hours. So keep a lookout for that. Um, let me see, there's some more questions. Yes, advanced clinical.org. So you can go over there and take a look at us, um, take a look at our programs. And um, like I said, there's the certified patient care tech, certified medical assisting. Um, we also have uh, the certified pharmacy tech as well. And yes, we are um, recording this webinar and I will have to ask um, one of our directors if, there is access to this recording um, or not. But thank you all so much for joining us. And I hope to see you all next month. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. <laughs>